Namaste Soul Tribe, welcome to this pick a card reading where we're going to look at a destined event that is meant to happen in this lifetime. This is in honor of the Venus in Scorpio transit September 22nd to October 17th, 2024. So we're going to pick the piles. We're going to do this quite differently. We're going to pick the images and then we get to pick the cards that has a word and then the zodiac sign. So pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. Goddess Isis in the house. Yes. Okay, now the word, the word. <laughs> Oh, by number one, you got destiny. Wow. Okay. Pile number two, <clears throat> we have flow. And last but not least, pile number three. Okay, this one. We have lessons. Beautiful. Let's get those zodiac signs so you can look at your sun sign, moon rising. Personally, when I work with the planets, I like to look at my personal planet placement, in this case, Venus. Okay, so let's see what we have. Okay, we're going to put those up. Up. There we go. All right. We have pile number one, Leo. Okay, we'll just put it there. We have Capricorn. We have Cancer. And we have Scorpio. Okay. Then we have Gemini, pile number two. We have Virgo. We have Libra and we have Pisces. Pile number three, we have Aquarius. We have Taurus. We have Sagittarius. And we have Aries. Okay, beautiful. And let's get the piles ready. So pile number one, already up, two, and three. Working a lot with the dragons at this time. Okay, up. Okay, that's one. Okay, and then we'll get some tarot cards if we need clarifications. All right, let's see you there. One, two, and three. Pile number one. Let's look at this destined event that is meant for you to manifest in this lifetime. With the word destiny, oh boy, oh boy, double confirmation, whatever this message is coming online and forward with, it was always meant to be yours. You know, with Venus energy, we're working with the heart chakra. So this is, I really already feel for you. There's almost like something that was always meant to be yours that is coming to life as we are transiting through Scorpio from September 22nd to October 17th, 2024. Okay, so if you chose with your zodiac sign, Scorpio, Cancer, or... Capricorn and Leo, it could be also your Venus placement. Um, okay, so with destiny, it says, my dreams show me that I am the co-creator of my life and destiny. It feels, if you chose this pile number one, 
um, that there's been a desire that's been following you for many, many years and maybe also many lifetimes that you were always meant to manifest, okay? And here we have the goddess Isis that speaks of divine guardianship here. It says, this is a time of significant spiritual growth and healing for you, that you are protected during this time by the love and the strength of the divine mother Isis. Relax and allow your transformation to happen. Your divine guardian protects you now. Let go. Trust unconditionally in what is happening for you as there is only divine love beneath the surface of the present situation. So some of you, I feel with this energy that pile number one, maybe things were not always easy with this guardian energy. Maybe some of you, you wanted to manifest safety, security, a sense of... Um, I would say almost like control, but what I mean by this is that uh, with a surrounding of people, of uh, situations and events that felt in alignment with you. And I feel that this is what this period of time is saying, that you were always to manifest this type of stability, okay? Now, the way for you to move ahead and manifest fully this is being shown and revealed to you. So let's see what the cards are revealing furthermore. We have gentleness. Strength is gentle. True kindness has wings. Love in action endures. We also have sanctuary. Embrace the need for solitude. Your inner sanctuary calls you. Renew yourself and thrive. Already I want to take a pause here. You see, like a pause. There's, there's definitely a feeling that all of your heart's desire, and especially a specific goal, a specific heart's desire, a specific destined, you know, um, I feel that for you, pile number one, it's, it's a feeling you've been craving to or long to manifest, to experience. It really feels deep. And here with the solitude and the gentleness, it feels that it's very connected to your compassionate heart. It really feels that it is from the environment that you're creating for yourself. Maybe some of you, you are strong empaths and you've maybe have gone through a lot of chaos. And what you've been wanting is that softness, gentleness, reciprocity, kindness, community in your surrounding that is destined for you to manifest, but the way there is from within out. There's definitely here some type of initiation. And with guardian, I'm also being called to mention maybe angelic consciousness, angels, archangels, uh, because of the guardian, your, your spirit team. There's something about your uh, higher protection, your divine protection that, you know, with all this very soft, gentle energy, you really feel that you always had access to uh, the spiritual realm. And there's some type of initiation that is being shown to you for this destined goal, this destined uh, event that you've been seeking to manifest um, that is unfolding for you. Okay. Let's see what we have. We also have the knot of Isis, part of your spiritual destiny. God, I, you know, we're going to see if we get some more details about this destined event and what it is. But again, we're tapping into a collective reading in general. Um, so maybe we won't have details, but it's something that is so connected to your heart because you know, some of you, you know, you've been watching my readings, but I will repeat for the ones that are new to the channel. Your heart chakra is weaved 
in perfect harmony with your soul and your mission on earth. The earth star chakra and the soul star chakra. Perfect fifth. Sacred harmony and sound. It's like, it's, it's wired this way. This is, you know, this cannot be changed. When you tap into your heart, you tap into your soul and you tap into your purpose. So th there's just something about your heart's vibration that seems to be opening up and that is revealing to you the way there, okay? Now, let me reread because I got interrupted with this spiritual destiny. So part of your spiritual destiny involves a special relationship with the goddess. This means that not only do you have the important spiritual task of helping her thrive in this world, but you are afforded her power, her protection, and her abundance too. You are now deepening your connection to the goddess. I love, love, love this. Beautiful. We also have the water dragon energy. Helps you flow easily around obstacles. Christ's light and love are flowing Develop your psychic abilities. Go with the flow. I feel as some of you, there's something with those runes here. It feels very Atlantis energy. Crystal light. Crystal sacred geometry. I really feel for some of you, I'm going to put it down in my notes so I can put it up there. If you have access to the YouTube Soul Tribe membership, all levels, work with the crystal light and heart Merkaba activation. So Merkaba activation, it really feels that there's something there that is being retrieved. So there's, there's initiation here. There's something about your connection to um, the elementals between the dragon energy, the crystal energy of Atlantis, the animal spirit, the angelic consciousness, you're, you're destined to be supported by those type of elementals and those type of consciousness to support, I feel, especially the rise of the feminine, the mother principle, and the healing a uh, power of love. You're very connected to the healing power of love. Let's see if we have any messages here with the dice that I wanted to come forward in the session. Okay. We have the 10th house and we have Pluto with Aquarius. I like how it's, you know, in my perception here, when I'm looking at this, it feels like um, the sacred geometry. It's not a grand trine. It's here. It's 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 tighter as a triangle and it's yod. It's uh, it's almost like some of you, maybe you have in your chart yod energy, which is two quincunxes with a sextile base that creates a, that type of triangle. And it's also called the finger of God. This is something again, and because of the Aquarius energy here, there's a certain way. There's a certain way to flow through life. There's a certain way to connect to the love within, the love that you are, that you're destined to manifest at a higher purpose. This is something that can fuel also uh, your career, that can also help you in your career. But there's deep transformation here. Deep transformation that is occurring through you following a certain path. It might, it seems that this path, it's almost like being called to follow a certain uncharted territory. And it's like, this is the path that leads you to this very specific destined, faded event. Let's see if we can get some more details. We're seeing that this is something very sacred about a way 
to express, show more love, more light with this crystal energy and the Pluto energy. Maybe it's a way to empower love, empower oneself with more love, infuse someone's cells with more love. The nervous system, when dragon energy comes forward, nervous system is highly involved, uh, transcending the survival mode and ascending to thriving mentality and principles. Okay, can we get some more? Okay, well, this one needs to be shown. Details about this destined event. Wow, self-master. It's something you've been working on for a while, pile number one. It's a craft. It could be, some of you, it could be a hobby. Some of you, it could be like, I don't know why, but I want to mention it, Etsy store. I just, I, this car just like, that's what I'm feeling right now. Some of you, it's something on Etsy. And what I mean by this, it's something that's very particular to your self-expression. It could be candle making, you know, it could be, you know, uh, herbal remedies, but it doesn't have to be. It's something that you, your soul has been perfecting for, I'm hearing centuries, so I will say it. But this is something that you've probably already started to rehearse, okay, in this lifetime. Can we have more details about this destined event for pile number one? We also have the emperor. Wow, well, you know, here, I would tell you, I've never seen this card like this. This is why it always blows my mind. I never paid attention to how there is this stream of light that flows through this man's brain, you know, and connects it to next move. This is something that you're creating in alignment with spirit. And this is why I said, you know, you have a lot of support from spirit, from the elementals. Some of you, you might be connecting to other dimensions, you know, other timelines, other spaces in time of expression of life. Again, it's a little bit out there for some of you, but that's okay. I feel that some of you, you'll understand, like, even just to think about it, the realm of your imagination where do you stream this? Where does it come from? Spirit. Spirit moves you. So you're connected. And again, a confirmation of some type of ancient lineage. Some of you, you might be highly connected to the Egyptian god and goddesses. Okay. And especially Isis with this particular um, pile. Let's see what we have. What is this destined event, fated event for pile number one? Okay, it's a lot of here that wants to come forward. Six of Cups, wow. There's, there's, with the Six of Cups, there's this energy of, you know, you see how it's like, connected to the child, connected to things that you loved as a child. Maybe some of you, it's like that hobby, that craft is connected to things that you've rehearsed, that you practiced, um, maybe that you had to put aside, and but it's coming back. Or something that was always in your field, always calling you. Even if it was not always conscious. Then we have the Five of Swords. And here, you know, usually this card speaks of, you know, the, the, how the mind gets you off track, you know. Some of you, but here I almost feel like you had to, especially we talked about this, you had to transcend some of the mental noise and mental chatter. But I really feel that you had to experience certain contrast and shadows to speak to the parts of you that were still dormant and that means your shadows the part of you that was 
You see, oh my God, the shadows came back. I don't know what's happening with the sun. It's just on and off, on and off. But you see, working with shadows, some of you, maybe you had to transcend certain fears. Maybe part of this creation was stalled in the past by your own fears. And maybe they're part of, you know, expressing to others through whatever that it is that you manifested how to be and in, stay inspired stay in connection with spirit stay in connection with your inner child and transcend those spheres and even communicate with those spheres communicate with those shadows as if there, there's value in everything so some of you are almost feel like in the self-mastery it's almost like also learning from your failures queen of cups so much compassion some of you, you might be channelers, just that, that queen. You know, I pick certain decks of cards for a reason because I know there's, there's going to be a certain image activation. But look at this. This is just underneath. Underneath, there's just like a channel. Um, you had maybe certain psychic abilities that you even had to perfect or, you know, deepen. Or even some of you, they were dormant and you just had to activate them. That's part of like, it's almost like I feel that part of like this destined way. It's almost as if you're being more taught that what is this distant event is not just a certain goal, but a way of living and experiencing life a way of manifesting and creating with the universe, a way to feel and create life with more gentleness, with more flow, with more ease and feeling of support and guidance. And the Eight of Cups. There's something here about a new horizon, something that you had to leave behind. With the Six of Cups, there could have been some things also from the childhood uh, that had to be left behind. Some of the programs, some of the mental chatter, some of the emotional, especially with the, the bowl here floating, but with a fire. Some of you, maybe you had to burn off certain contrast and contract from past lives. You know, especially when you put, put you put the light on certain shadow aspect, you're you're able to to see a new dawn appear. Things that you didn't think were possible for you, because maybe of whatever the fear and the shadows were, you know, creating inside of you. Wow, such depth here. Yeah. Let's see if there's something more for pile number one about this destined event. For the Pluto. Something about the solar plexus here. Let's see. Wow. Ace of Cups. Very interesting. Okay. Um, so the Ace of Cups, when you work with the zodiac and the wheel uh, of astrology, this is Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius season. So it seems that here, through those three months, you're going to flow more and more with your heart's desire, with your heart's flow. There's a heart expansion. Uh, some of you, I would almost say that uh, you're connected to your crystal heart, your crystal lotus heart. This is the fourth dimensional expression of your heart chakra. You're connected to a different field of creation. Yeah. And what I mean by different is just a higher frequency of perceiving this reality that is much more attuned to unconditional love. Five of Cups. You might also want to, you know, leave behind certain things. But I feel like here with the this and the foot in it, it's like you're going to recreate out of the disappointments, 
out of the challenges, they're going to be a release and a recreation through the same energy. You're understanding here, pile number one, that energy is never destroyed or lost. It is only changing its shape and form. And you're going to manifest some type of shift with um, and transformation and alchemy with whatever no longer serves you. <sighs> that illuminates the path. Because remember, there's something here about the way shower. There's a, there's a way that you're showing the light, showing the love, expressing the love. Through those upcoming three seasons, you're manifesting something very deep. I would say for some of you here, um, and again, that's for the YouTube Soul Tribe member, you might want to work with the void frequency. The void frequency is very powerful in terms of um, the secret geometry that I use and infuse in the sound is a sound that literally creates the shape of a shell. Like, like it, so the shell, what it does, it always has this infinite power to recreate just like a womb, recreate itself, but also there's a tune finding to its resonance, to its intuition, so you can hear yourself in greater ways, hear truly the energy of your own um, potential, because in this void, the void is not empty, it's actually full of light and bliss, okay? So that's what I have for you, pile number one. I am just overjoyed with this energy and this, this activation. Some of you, if you resonate with those readings, I will have a cosmic alignment energy session for this. I just did the one for Libra season where we have those truths that are coming to light. Dragon energy is very strong. I was amazed. I was working with the lymphatic system, um, you know, certain techniques and massages and, and, you know, body work that I've learned through my own journey. And I was like, I cannot believe that I'm being shown to use those techniques to help the energy alignment, to help the manifestation. If that's something that resonates with you, you can check out the Soul Tribe membership for the Star Seed Rise Up level. Thank you so very much. Please remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your messages. So we are inquiring about a faded event that is happening, unfolding for you at this time as Venus is transiting Scorpio September 22nd to October 17th, 2024. So you chose the beautiful flow card and just, I don't know what's behind this card, but it just feels like an invitation from the goddess. So let's read this card first. Ooh, portal of light, portal of light. It is only this physical reality that is bound by time and space. You are a conscious being on levels beyond the physical world. You are guided to work with your healing powers beyond the confines of time and space. You will not become ungrounded through such spiritual work. You are not leaving your earthly connection behind. You are merely adding to it. Ooh, okay. And we have the flow with, I now open myself to inspiration and watch creativity flow through me. Whoa. It really feels here um, that you're channeling some type of information, some type of guiding light I'm hearing pile number two so I'm going to put this uh, the zodiac sign on the side we have Pisces we have Libra we have Virgo and Gemini okay let's see what is this faded event we have ooh, manifestation your dreams have untold energy Open the door and let them live. 
desire and belief are your power. Doors, portal. Wow. What are you up to, pile number two? Hmm. Healing, healing powers. Bless all in need of healing, hope and love. Spirit grants us strength and wisdom. Guide us to the path of wellness. Okay, some of you, I have to interrupt here. You're definitely some type of healer, okay? You're here to channel certain divine ways to heal the collective. Obviously, you're going to go first through healing yourself to have that frequency, learning sacred ways of manifestation and especially in terms of physical wellness. It's, it's unbelievable. Now, with physical health comes physical wealth. I want to, um, you know, stress this word. Ooh, some of you, maybe there's something about, you know, being able to help people release their tension. I don't know why, but I feel like I want to mention it. Some of you, maybe there's something about releasing of fascia tension. Okay, I uh, really feel it. We need something here. You're working with certain tools of, of manipulation, chiropractor thing. It, ju it ju just feels like there's hands, healing hands going on uh, people's bodies, physicality to manifest like through you, there is source flowing through you, probably strong energy uh, flowing through the hands, uh, which I'm not surprised if I'm not mistaken. We had, yes, the Gemini, G Gemini, <laughs> Gemini, Gemini energy that was there. Uh, Gemini very much connected to the arms. Okay. So the flow of the alchemy between yin and yang receiving and giving. Okay. Let's see what else. The Eye of Horus. The Eye of Horus brings divine perception, protection, and insight. You are gifted with certain spiritual abilities, including divine sight that are awakening and growing now. You have much divine support and protection so that you may grow your abilities and serve others with your divine gifts. Trust your perception and know that you are divinely protected. Oh my God. Pile number two, um, service is big. You might have some sixth house energy in your chart that will help you reveal some of your abilities. I strongly feel it. It's funny. I have certain soul tribe members that are coming up to my mind. So I, I'm, <laughs> I know that when I'm feeling particular pers people, I know they're going to connect to the messages or just through that connection that we're calling. You know, it's like the message is coming halfway. It's like a bridge. And some of you, you are bridging for others source energy. It's almost as what I'm feeling is like, imagine like a body that doesn't have, that has so much congestion, so much trauma, so much uh, constriction, uh, maybe even like one that I almost like over expended, you know, like an organ that's overstretched. Um, it's like you have the ability to respark source energy, respark the alignment of the cells to flow with more, yeah, more alignment, more cosmic alignment, more source alignment. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Pile number two. Thank you. Okay. And then you have, oh, wow. Okay. That, you know, guys, I'm just, I'm laughing because last reading for uh, Libra season. Okay. What truth is coming to light? This pick a card. I don't know why, but I feel, and I felt it with the portal energy here. If some of you haven't watched this, I'm going to put it up there. Okay. Um, Libra season. This, there's definitely messages here, but I picked a dragon that was connected to Orion and I released the, uh, I was called to release the frequency to work with uh, my cosmic alignment energy session for the sun in Libra. Now I had also put the Pleiades and look at this, the blue dragon from the Pleiades. So some of you, if you like 
uh, those messages, know that I already know my Venus cosmic alignment energy session is going to be with the Pleiades. I, I had it written as my to-do creative list and um, yeah, the cards are just <laughs> inviting me even more so. Uh, so I'm, I'm just putting this as a even greater reminder okay prepares you to accept <gasps> source healing what did i just tell you <gasps> accept a heart activation give and receive heart healing oh my lord and it's so beautiful because we're working with venus which is connected to your heart chakra Okay, the blue rose always reminds me of a special order, a spiritual order. Some of you are connected in very specific ways to certain star system and you're channeling certain frequencies and energies and the knowledge that you get from those constellations. Some of you could be in particular Pleiades, but know at this time that uh, the seven sisters, okay, in the Pleiades, they are dancing with Uranus in retrograde, okay? So there's, there's definitely here some confirmations for you to look into your star alignment, your star system, your connection to source, and know that you're offering that connection through you. And that's beautiful because you're active. You you don't have to, uh, you know, your connection is very specific, but I feel that you have to recognize and that's something that I want to share and gift you through this reading, through your presence here. Your connection to your stars, to your goddess energy, to your muses energy, all the things that, you know, I talk to you about, okay? All that potential that you're awakening, what you're sharing through you, sharing this energy, that you channel through you activates other people's star potential, star connection. It's not this, it, it's never going to be exactly what you're channeling because it's source energy through them. And that's the beauty. That's what I love well, personally when I ask, you know, people that work with me, like, hey, what's your experience? Because your experience is going to be very uh, unique to you. It's source flowing through you, you know? And with that feedback that I get, I often can tell like, hey, go and check out this and check out that. Some of you, if you feel called to comment in certain things, that I always pick up on things. And I love this because at a higher soul level, we're communicating with each other. We give each other clues. So let's see here what the star astro dice want to share with us. Woo, 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 woo. Child. <laughs> oh my god uranus okay this is something that i will you know um have later in time uranus um in retrograde in taurus we have a while with this but i'll have a cosmic attunement with this uh transit and that, that's probably going to be obviously with the pleiades okay so there's something here with the connection to the seven sisters, we have a Scorpio that's coming to healing. Some of you, you're helping people with their shadow work. You're helping to spark the light on their darkness, but also, especially with the third house, communicate. Communicate with their shadow. Communicate with the part of them that is unseen. Now, I'm always reminded what you offer to others is something you offer to yourself first. So with this in mind, <laughs> let's see where we're going with this energy. Okay, let's get the tarot cards. So what else do we need to know for pile number two about their healing abilities activation? There's something big that is coming to light. How can we support pile number two in greater ways? Ooh, something about quantum. I'm going to say it because I, 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 I wanted to say something else, but my mouth got like override, okay? Quantum entanglement. There's something about quantum entanglement, and I'm going to put for you um, entanglement. There's a frequency that I want you to use. And because we talked about flow, 
It's in the quant, and we talked about fascia, the quantum fascia healing playlist is one that talks about ending karmic bondage. Okay, there's something that happened. Okay, and that means that makes sense with allowing others to see their shadow because usually what we don't know about ourselves keeps us repeating the same things. It keeps us in those loops. And especially with the Seven of Cups, those repetition, it's almost like we know we have so many choices and yet we go back to the same option. And here with the ladder, there's something greater with the ocean. Yeah, this is really connected to the Pleiades. There's something that wants to be offered to you uh, as a particular way to, to work beyond the constriction of time and space. That was coming a lot in your messages from Isis. Some of you, maybe it's also going to help people that feel like they've wasted their time, they don't have enough time in their life to manifest something greater, it's going to take too much time. Okay, anything that has uh, that makes you feel yourself, okay, pick a um, pile two, or your clients, or your family, or the people around you, your surrounding, your, or your colleagues, or whatever, to say like, I'm too old for this, I don't, you know, oh, I don't have time during the day to do this, I don't have time to meditate, I don't have time, okay, anything that has to do with time and space, or, you know, when I'll go, uh, one day I'll go to this country, or one day I'll go and visit this, or one day I'll, okay, so that's kind of like fragments you, um, and we're ending this, we're definitely ending this type of dynamic, okay? Uh, that's part of the things that you're going to have to do for yourself, that you're doing for yourself, and that in return, you will offer as a service. Stopping quantum entanglement, karmic bondage. Very interesting. Mm, okay, there's a lot here, but we will accept. <laughs> I don't know why, but I heard accept the challenge. We'll see that maybe there's a challenge here uh, or there. We'll see. Okay. We have the page of pentacles with the seven of swords. Look at this particular seven of swords. I really feel it's, it's a reiteration of what I was saying. The seven of swords is in the regular tarot. Uh, someone that steals the swords from the opposite camp. So they won't be a battle the next day. But you're seeing here, it's like this whole shadow, this, this, this crow, this, this hidden, maybe, um, you know, pain. I feel like some of you, you're just uh, putting the light, shining the light on certain pain. Maybe you're working with the pain body. Again, with here, the wheels, you're helping people understand their repetition of their own wheels or what make them spin their story in a certain way, I'm hearing. Yeah, with this, I would, I would really suggest, I'm going to put it also again, uh, to work with the frequency that I just released from Orion. Okay, working with Orion frequency will help you because what I picked up on, um, you know, with Orion, what was funny is that all that was happening with the transit, including this Venus in Scorpio, it's almost like I was feeling like this whole rush from the equinox and the lunar eclipse that was a, a, a energy block on my heart that I could not pinpoint, but that was energetically coming up. And that finally, when I did my own meditation with the equinox, okay, after leading it, I have to rehearse my own energy session so I can receive it. I felt this huge weight come off of my, my heart. And it's as if like all of a sudden, my ability to perceive my own intuition, my own guidance was released from the fog, from, from the confusion. My mind was able to think more clearly once the hard block was removed. And interestingly, with Orion's frequency, I work with a frequency, a right frequency for eye inflammation. 
eye, <laughs> okay? But also the eye, like the, your eyeball, okay? Um, because it was showing me how through the iris, we're getting all those rays of information, which help us perceive a certain reality. And there was inflammation, there was pain. There was pain in the perception. That means it was locking the mind. Orion, star seeds, and constellation as an energy message and teachings has a lot of mind power, mind focus. But we know that it only can expose to you a certain truth. Okay, so that was that was where you know the inflammation from the perception usually also connected to the heart, uh, needed to be removed. So there was uh, another, almost like another, I'm seeing a paint. It's a, another reality, another timeline that could be painted, like almost like giving you a new canvas, okay? I really felt I wanted to share this with you because um, really getting to the attunement for Orion, I was so supported and at the same time the congestion of what my body and emotional pain body was going through I could see how there was interference with the intuition being translated okay and some of you I feel this is what you're going to be able to offer as an I oh my god <laughs> we're getting there okay as an eye you because you're not their pain body you'll be able to touch the pain body to tap into the pain body and be able to bring clarity on certain things that they're not able to see and that means that obviously you're going to want to do this for yourself first so you can bring more flow more clarity to others now let's see what could be part of that message you have the temperance card i feel i want to move this to the side Working with Kundalini, Yin and Yang. Oh, you see how I was mentioning the uh, equinox? You know, that's a confirmation for me. Um, I offer to my YouTube Soul Tribe once a month one of the starseed level for so for everyone to have access to once a month a cosmic alignment. And I've been hearing that the equinox is the one. So I'm going to release this. Um, some of you, if that's something that you want to tap into, you'll have access here. If you don't see it here, that means I've used too many of those timestamps and you'll find it below in the description box. Okay, all right, the equinox. Yes, look at this, the wheel. This is, this is changing fate. You're changing the fate, your fate and the fate of others, your compass. You're bringing self-mastery, you're bringing to life a certain desire. A certain look at some of you, you might be also um, working with the, the bowls, crystal bowls, um, the copper ones, and king of swords, especially this king of swords. You see how there's um, those poles as electric poles or telephone poles, and you see how the strings here are being released, and we have a bat, so people can perceive with in greater ways their own stream of communication with the divine, with their shadows, with their pain body, with uh, their own, you know, um, with their true I, their true I essence, their true essence. Um, some of them also, you're part of that bridging of connecting to the stars. What makes them special? Thank you so much, pile number two. I am just so in love with what you have to offer. Thank you so much for all the work that you are channeling yourself to be able to provide this. Just know that I can feel this. And when I'm looking, at it, I just saw 2121 on this part of the video recording. There's definitely, you're helping people change their DNA as you're changing yourself, you know, 21's reflection of 12. Uh, I really see that and I thank thee for your services. If that's you, please comment below. I would love to connect. And if this supported you, please remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste.
Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your messages about a faded event meant to happen in this lifetime for you. If you chose according to the zodiac placement, we have Sagittarius, we have Aries, we have Taurus, and we have Aquarius. So let's see what we have for you. I have to say with the lessons um, message, and this Isis goddess opening up her heart. I really, her heart, <laughs> I meant her arm, but okay. <laughs> I said heart. I, I feel there's a welcoming. There's a new phase that is coming forward for you from all the lessons that you've integrated at this specific time. Okay, so let's see what we have. I look for opportunities in life's challenges via my dreams and I learn the lesson. Yeah, I really feel that there's a, this, this opening, this space. Maybe your heart is opening up so much more. Um, I'm hearing especially for, from, from a point of self-love that it's radiating outside and, and you're just tapping into a new field of opportunities, opportunities uh, that are created from you overcoming some of those challenges, okay? Let's see what this Isis card has for us. Oh, wow. Magic and ritual. Effect in the external world can be created through inner practice. Hard-centered ritual can support your inner path in the physical world. You are encouraged to enhance your power with regular practice as you grow in grace, in love, and ability, and wisdom. Applying your inner beauty to transform your outer world. Oh, wow. This, is, this feels very high priestess-like. A high reverence, high humility into your connection to the divine, into acknowledging your self-worth, your self-love. And I'm not saying that it was always the case, but you've learned how to slow down. I feel some of you especially how to connect more to your natural rhythm, to your natural heartbeat, to your natural pace of creation, because it's highly connected to your heart, okay? Let's see what else. Pile number three. Elegance. Oh, wow. It is found in the beauty of nature, the lotus waiting to bloom. Be the swan on the water and glide. See, with the lotus energy, we know it has its roots from and inside the mud, thickest of mud. And yet, you have so many messages. I feel for you, pile number three, this, this um, energy of being a bridge between spiritual and physical is really stemming from... Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm seeing... Um, a quote that I have from something called the truth bombs and it says like dirty your halo it's almost as if like you have this very pure beautiful energy and yet you had to experience very powerful deep dark intense contrast and lessons to have this almost like this ability to grow roots even in the most challenging environments. I wouldn't be surprised if some of you, uh, it's like an ability to make every place and everywhere you go feel like a home, feel filled with warmth and nurture and love, feel a lot of compassion and empathetic abilities from you. It's almost like I I feel some of you very connected to touch, the sense of touch. Um, oh, well, Taurus energy. <laughs> it feels very connected to the touch, to, to, to the senses. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, some of your experience, I could be highly connected also to contrast through the senses. So that means really deep and, you know, um, 
yeah, I, 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 I'm going to say it because I heard it and it might be for someone. It could even be like violence. I, I saw the contrast, you know, like from being someone that is so kind to the touch and kind with their touch, having to experience something as like physical violence, abuse, okay? So my heart extends to you, but I really feel how it didn't alter this ability in you to have a very warm, heartwarming presence, beauty about yourself. Yeah. Dance. Find your heart's rhythm. Step lightly and swing with the melody. Close your eyes and let joy lead the way. Oh, wow. I like this. There's a message here with the frog. You know, usually the frog speaks of decluttering. I want you to know, because you're so connected to your senses, that movement, movement of your body, especially through dancing, is creating a sacred alchemy. You know, with the dragonfly, dragonfly, they spend at least, I think it's about four years in this nymph state before they receive the specific, uh, you know, um, chemistry through the light and the heat that creates the transformation. So there's a lot of energy around transmutation, transformation with the dragonfly that I feel that for you, it, it had to do like a lot with maybe emotional baggage, heavy contrast that you had to endure for many years in order to finally now find the right and receive the right cosmic energy. Some of you, this Venus in Scorpio transit is highly transformative for you to uplift some of the um, past things that weighted you down and transform. There's, it's actually almost as, as if you, you're able to find more grace. It's almost like I'm, I'm feeling that some of you are being watched and people are wondering like, how does the pile number three is able to look even better? And what I mean by better, it's your aura, you know, it's not just the physical appearance, even though people will see it as a physical appearance and expression, but it's like, how do they manage to look even better, uh, appear that they're doing even better, even though they've gone through X, Y, and Z? And movement is, is part of that transformation. Know this, okay? Because remember, we're talking about magic and rituals, some of you, involving movement. Some It, it doesn't have to be just dance. It can be yoga. It can be... Um, Tai Chi, it can be, re, you know, Reiki or, you know, any type of energy movement, actually uh, working with energy does bring you movement. But I do feel that then when you move, whether it's walking in nature, uh, just maybe some of you, you like to talk with your hands, there's energy that is being expressed and expressed and expressed, okay? And it's part of the ritual, moving in a certain way. You see here in, in her presence, it's, she feels very still. She's kneeling. She's not really moving. She's holding a certain light. And there's something here about you being a vessel for holding a certain light. And this is the light of someone that has gone through, and I'm going to say it because I heard it, hell and back. And, and, and is still even more beautiful. Has turned their darkness into gold. Has been able to integrate it. Has been able to alchemize and transform it has been able to dance with their shadows. Let's see what else. The, pff, look at this. The dark healing chamber. Like what? The most challenging task is to take courage in both hands. And remember the hands. And journey within to meet our own dark self and begin the healing task of bringing love, acceptance, and light to it. The sacred purpose of any enemy, within or without, is to push us to venture inward, to seek and heal the darkness within. So this is very interesting because you're manifesting a phase where people are seeing such an expression of you 
You know, it's, it was always fated that you were going to succeed. You were going to succeed through those dark times. You were going to get back up. And some of you are still struggling with this. Know that it was, it is meant in this lifetime to you to come back up on top. This is definitely something uh, that was scripted, that you probably scripted even for yourself as part of your soul's evolution, but also as your soul's um, vibrational imprint. Almost like, like, you know, that's part of your story. That's part of what makes you so handsome, beautiful. That's what makes you you. And that is priceless. Priceless. We have here the green gold dragon from Cyrus. I love it. All the <laughs> all the star seed uh, dragons has been coming up recently in the readings. I didn't I didn't even know they were in those decks, which makes me laugh. So for you, my pile number three, I'm going to put it. If you don't see it up there, it will be in the description box because I can only put a certain amount. I'm going to put the. Um, Oh wow, it was 11 11 when uh, on this portion of the reading when I talked about Cyrus. Okay, so this this is big. There's an awakening here with your co your connection to Cyrus. The green gold dragon from Cyrus brings universal knowledge to your spiritual pathway. Learn about spiritual technology, be a transmitter of sacred knowledge. And your sacred knowledge here definitely is is it's about alchemy, alchemical a process of the soul some of you i really feel like um you should go and look into the anime and animus the process of alchemy there's like different colors rudeus uh some one that's red one that's black one that's yellow um i'm gonna see if i find something uh and i'll put it in the description about the anime and animus Okay, this is this is beautiful, very much about how to alchemize the soul. You could be someone that's deep into psychology, uh, understanding spirituality. Okay, let's see if we can get more messages about this manifestation. You're definitely here at a level where you're dancing with the ebb and flow of life in such grace. Uh, you know, things that are happening in your life, you're always knowing that the universe has your back, that things are working out for you, not against you. Um, and and, and, and it's, it's giving you a certain charisma that I can feel that is just very gentle um, and very warm and very inviting. So like, really, I love this. Oh, I'm being called to look at first those dice. Sorry. Not sorry. Just some of you, I just feel like I want to mention it. If you still feel blocked with this energy, stop the people pleasing. Stop the stop it. Okay, just be yourself. Don't try. Some of you, if you're like sharing your gift or you know just doing your own thing, don't think about what people want to see from you. Show what f makes you feel uplifted. Don't care about the rest. We got the sun on the dance. Some of you, if you're interested, I do have in the YouTube Soul Tribe member membership called the Goddess Rise Up, the Muse Terpsichore, the Muse of the Dance and Movement. I have reading for those goddesses and, and muses. Um, there's something about you shining, shining through movement. <sighs> this is definitely part of your purpose. That's the 10th house, your career. Oh, and Libra. We're in Libra season. I feel as some of you, Libra season, there's big changes of manifestation, big downloads, big information on your purpose, on how to make this. Uh, some of you, if you've been wanting to manifest it as uh, a passive income, or a passive income, income, uh, service, offer, whatever that is, there's, there's through Libra season, some insight, highlights, ideas, inspiration that are coming forward very strongly at this at this time. 
Yeah, you're awakening to a part of you that is uh, finally ready to produce um, those things you rehearsed yourself to to others. It's like it's like yes, now I've learned those things. I I have this level of mastery knowledge. You know, we're, we're seeing here, you have access to a certain knowledge that is meant to be shared at this time. Yeah, I don't know why it's in this order, but okay. I respect that. Okay, so that's like already a message, like almost like you probably had some things that happen in different order in your life, things you may have experience you decided to do this and then do that there was maybe a lack of order from a superficial way of looking at things but for you it was a divine order a divine reorganization for you to be able to reach this particular manifestation of your purpose wow i mean you can't like make that up that's like ultimate manifestation of especially a reality that has abundance that has wealth that has all the joys everything that you would want on the earthly plane that is manifested for you wow can we get details about this okay we have the devil card the three of cups the page of pentacles the five of pentacles i gotta stop just here for a second i have to tell you like when i started pulling this i almost had a buzz in my head I mean, when I, and when i was like asking like myself what is this buzz i felt as some of you you may have had gone through um certain addictions recovering from certain addictions or you're helping people recover from addictions, certain, uh, certain patterns of thoughts that kept them trapped. It can be, and but it doesn't have to be, okay? Addiction is not just substance, but there's definitely here uh, something very particular in regards of freeing oneself from the strings and karmic bondage of certain perception, certain illusion, certain sense of being abandoned, of being, you know, um, left out in the cold, left out without any resources. You had to dig deep for the resources that you have at this time. Please know this and acknowledge this as part of something you can be proud of. The things that helped you rise again and again from the depth of certain experiences. This is precious knowledge. You had to go through this. To, so that's part of like the faded events, but it's almost like the faded outcome is that you're going to be granting others those same insights, those same abilities. Some of you, it could be just because it's underneath. You could have gone from rags to riches. Some of you, this is going to be from rags to riches from homelessness to abundance it's it's very drastic the same way the darkness is so drastic compared to the light that i see in you very very strong very powerful three. Oh, power, powerful three <laughs> with the three some of you you have a very strong connection to source look at this the ace of wands powerful inner sight but look at this this crying you had to go within everything you experience on the outside that brought you down it was because your depth was within you had to go and seek that light you had to go deep dig deep inside to seek that light Look at this, Six of Pentacles. There's going to be a lot of uh, beautiful retribution here and Six of Swords. Uh, I feel that 
what's fated to happen here is a karmic retribution, a karmic rebalancing as um, you're honoring the things that you had to remove yourself from, the choices, the strong, brave heart and choices that you had to make, the rituals that you had to implement, the rituals of self-love and, and, and self-worth. that You really did like... Yeah, you, you've gone again, I'm saying it again, from hell and back. And this is, thank you for all that you will share, whether it's through stories, whether it's just through your presence. There's a certain warmth. It's almost like, you know, like your flame was always there and you had to dig deep to see how bright it was because you always had that aura of warming up everything you came into presence of but if you're not able to see it it's going to take advent be taken advantage of or it's going to be uh you know almost like a discarded as something that you know you're not so special or but there was always something very very special about that light and i really feel the warmth of your heart and that's beautiful so thank you for all that you're going to be sharing um, even more so because I feel again we had the Libra season there's just strong manifestation really expect some strong retribution karmic uh, reward cosmic reward that is coming strongly forward for you if some of you want to connect to the cosmic alignment energy sessions that i'm offering you have the details down below this is the starseed rise up level thank you so much for being here please remember to like those videos it supports the channel to grow namaste